What's a bigger disappointment in New York? The Yankees, who are now in last place, or the Mets under 500? Chris Mad Dog Russo joining us. He brings you high heat on MLB Network. Let me start there, Chris. Bigger disappointment in New York, the Yankees or the Mets? Yeah, very good to be on, Dan. You know, we love you. I would definitely say the Mets because the Yankees have the excuse with Judge at 16 and 19 without him. So as a result, I think a lot and Rondon didn't pitch. And uh, I think that uh, at the end of the day, I still think people think the Yankees will be OK. Uh, I think the Mets are a colossal flop. I mean, let's be honest. They haven't gotten great starting pitching, uh, especially out of the big two of those shows. It was good yesterday, but a little late. Uh, they're inconsistent offensively. They're seven or eight games out of uh, below 500. And remember about the Mets, most Mets fans are Jets fans. So the Mets season is over. I mean, the Jets start camp this week with Aaron Rodgers, and they play the Browns in a Hall of Fame game. Nobody is going to care about the Mets at all the next two and a half months. I mean, all right, they pay attention at the deadline if they make some trades. I heard you talking about that a few minutes ago. But the Mets season, they're not winning. They're obviously, they're 30 games behind Atlanta, and they're not going to make the playoffs as a wild card. The Yankees could still easily make the playoffs as a wild card. So I think the Mets, as of right now, off last year, Verlander, the owners got more money than God. They got a $360 million payroll. They're much more disappointed. Is this owner getting a hall pass, Steve Cohen, with yes. the Mets? Yes. Does he deserve a hall pass? I Right now he does. Yeah. He's at least think, spending. Yeah. If I'm a Mets fan, he's trying, right. which is what you want. 100%. Plus, DeGrom, he left, but DeGrom then hurts his arm. So people can't kill him about letting DeGrom walk because he's got his second Tommy John. He brought Verlander in. Most Mets fans didn't have a problem with that. He lost Diaz. Uh, you know, a lot of these uh, versatile role players, the Canas, the Martes, the third baseman, haven't hit nearly as well. Alonzo's hitting 200. He gets a pass. I think the GM gets a little grief, and Epler. I think Buck will get a little grief. But I do think the fact that the owner is a breath of fresh air, hasn't gone off the deep end with moves and moaning and groaning about the manager and everything else, and a $355 million payroll. He just bought the team. The owner gets a complete pass. On the other side of the coin, I think the Yankee fan, Cashman's been there for 25 years. Whether he's done a great job, so-so job, he's been there 25 years with success. But that's a long time to be a general manager of a team in New York. 25 years? And they haven't been in a World Series in 14 years. And people are, a little, are down on Boone. I mean, Boone's been there since 2018, and they have not been to a World Series. They fired the previous manager who has been there about the same amount of time and won a World Series. So that's some of the issues with Boone. I think people are down on those two. But as far as Cohen is concerned, Dan, you know the New York fan. I think most Met fans, after Will Pond, likes Cohen as his owner. What would be bigger to the city, the Jets winning the Super Bowl or the Knicks winning the NBA Finals? Jets. The Jets. I mean, uh, football is bigger than basketball. Um, uh, I understand that a lot of New York fans like the football giants and there's no Nets fans. So there's more of a New York Nick fandom. They, they dominate the market much more than say the Jets do because of the Giants. But I think the Jets, they've been basically useless since 1969. Rodgers is a huge player. Football is a far bigger sport. Um, uh, I don't think, and plus the expectation level. I think there's an expectation level with the Jet fan, with Rodgers. Most people realize the Knicks have gotten better, but they're a second-round playoff team. And so the they don't expect them to win, a, and they're not going to win an NBA championship. I think the expectation level for the Jets is much higher, which then increases the juice if they win. So I think the Jets are a much bigger story. I, mean, I think the Jets are the biggest story in New York right now as far as winning. I think if the Jets win... It will be bigger than any other team winning. Giants, Mets, Rangers. I think if the Met Jets win it all, that's a huge story in the fall in New York. Chris Mad Dog Russo, host of Mad Dog Unleashed on Sirius XM High Heat on MLB Network. You a Aaron Rodgers guy? Uh yeah, I I love Rodgers' game. I think that um, you know, he hasn't been great in the postseason. He's coming off a so so year, was not great against the Lions the year before San Francisco. Uh, he's good to the media. Uh, he gives you, he, he comes on. He's not afraid to talk. I think he thinks he's smarter than everybody in the room. So I think that bothers some people sometimes. He thinks he's smarter than you. Uh, but, uh, you know, he seems to have embraced being a Jet. He seems to understand a bit of the Jet history. Now, he's been all over the place. 
Ranger games, Nick <laughs> games, Taylor Swift. He's trying to get him. He's trying to get himself immersed in the New York culture. Uh, but I think that uh, he's Chris, got- Chris, he no. was stuck in Green Bay for 15 years. Him. He needed 100%. to get out and do some so <laughs> <laughs> things socially. <laughs> uh, Swift is not going to Lambo. 100% right. uh, so from that standpoint, I think that uh, he's done everything good for, since he's been here. He showed up at OTAs, which is helpful. And the Jet fan is so psyched to be relevant. So psyched to be in a postseason scenario, and they should be. And with Wilson, Garrett Wilson, and with obviously, uh, you know, signing the defensive lineman this week, Bryce, the running back comes back. I mean, they bring in Lazard. They they should be. He's here. They brought in Hackett to help them. They should have a good year. Now, the Jets always have a black cloud, so let's not go crazy. But the Jets should be, what, 11-6, and 12-5? right in the mix for a division with Buffalo yeah. uh, should be a playoff team. A lot of teams make the postseason, and then it's a crapshoot Burrow, Mahomes, who knows, but they should be a factor in 2020. I'd be shocked if they're not, they should have a good team. Back to baseball. John Morosi from uh, MLB network says the angels are now in a listening mode with Shohei Otani trade inquiries. I don't know what that means. You're in a means listening. Nothing. Means nothing. Okay. Right. I mean, what does that mean? Uh, sure. The guy calls up and says, I'll give you my whole roster for him. Uh, you, you know, you'd have to listen. I don't think the owner's trading him. I really don't. The Angels are done. We know that. They're finished. Uh, but I I don't think that owner who's been there forever, if he leaves as a free agent and you put a $40 million dollar off on the table and he leaves, you won't get destroyed. If you don't, um, if you trade him, you're going to get killed like Frazee uh, did with the Red Sox back with Ruth. Uh, what are you going to get for him anyway? You know, you get a couple of prospects. Everybody who brings him in knows he's just a rental. Even if he goes to the Dodgers and you don't want to trade him to L.A., why would you want to trade him to the Dodgers? I mean, you know, they're 30 miles away. The Giants, I don't think, are going to spend, are going to trade for him. Nor do I think Texas will. So, a not trading the Yankees got enough issues. The Mets aren't in the mix right now. So, I don't think the uh, you're going to get enough back anyway to make it worth your while. I mean, I, I know you get a couple of prospects back, but again, with a home, him only being maybe available for a couple of months with that franchise, and I know the Dodgers, I know Texas, I know the Giants, I would be really surprised if Otani is not an angel after July 31st. Now, I don't think he's going to sign there, yeah. but I would be surprised if they trade him. I really would. I don't think it's a story. Better for baseball if he stays or if he's traded? Uh, traded. Because you want him in the playoffs, you know, and he's not going to stay there long term. So he's not going to be there next year. So you want him in the postseason and baseball has some issues with its postseason. Then it's always up against football, which is tricky. You got games on FS1. You know, you can never find them. You know, we've, we've got we go through this all the time. Plus, you got Tampa, the, the Twins. You know, Milwaukee, you know, you, you don't have the Mets. You don't have the Cubs. You know, you may not have the Yankees. So, I mean, Red Sox, probably not. So you don't have a lot of those big teams and you may not have Otani. So if Otani gets traded to a big team and they make the playoffs, he's eyeballs to the set and they need that. So I think baseball, if they traded him to a team that's going to be in the postseason, I think that's good for the game. You need to see, you need to see Otani in October. Yeah, no. That's why he has to look around and go, what is Mike Trout's career other than he's been in a, a playoff game and he's he's gone to the Hall of Fame, he's been an MVP, but that was nine years ago that he was in a playoff. For 10 years ago, he was in a playoff. And Otani has to look around going, I'm going to get paid a lot of money, but nobody's going to see me. Exactly right. And I don't want to hear about people wondering and going about Trout because Trout signed two long-term contracts with the Angels. He signed one three years ago and bet signed with the Dodgers. He easily could have played out the string and gone to a team that's got pitching that will win every year. Phillies. And he didn't. He took the $420 million and stayed with the Angels. So this idea that we got to have a pity party for Trout. Oh, we never see him in October. What a disgrace. Oh, hold on now. He could have been in October. He could have left the Angels, who haven't been, as you said, have not been a huge factor for a long period of time. And he decided to stay. So I can't feel sorry for Trout's lot in life because he could have left. Otani, 
I, I think Otani is, you know, at the end of the day, I think there's three teams. I think Seattle's sneaky. I think they could get him. Uh, and next year, I think the Giants are a possibility, and I think the Dodgers. I think those are the three teams for Otani at the end of the day. Yeah. I don't think he's going to the East Coast. Before I let you go, 60 seconds to talk Wimbledon, if you would like. Oh, was, uh, you know, one of the glorious finals you're ever going to see. Both players played great. Uh, had Evan flow to the match. Uh, Alcarez is going to win 10 to 20 majors easy in his career. Um, you know, uh, Djokovic missed a swinging volley there in that fifth set tie break, in that fifth set when he had a break point at 1-1. But it was a win for tennis, Dan. You know, five hours back and forth. Djokovic is better when he's got an opponent because then it's a great uh, contrast in styles. And I think with the bad weather in the Northeast yesterday, I'd, I'd be surprised if they didn't have some people watching. And it was good for the sport. And Alcaraz is something. I mean, let's face it. I mean, he does it all. I mean, as Djokovic said in his post-match, he said he's a combination of Federer and, and, and Nadal. That's how good Alcaraz is. He's won two majors by the time he's 20. He's going to play 16 years. Djokovic is going to retire sooner or later. Who the hell is going to beat him? He's going to win 20 majors, this guy. is that good. So it was good for the sport. Loved it. Fun to watch. Uh, Chris uh, heads up Mad Dog Sports Radio on Sirius XM and uh, Mad Dog Unleashed. That's uh, 3 to 7 every day. I believe it's still 3 to – are you one from – 3 to 6. Oh, you're yes. mailing it in. You're only doing three hours. Only doing three. Thank God. Uh, and, and you're going to the Jersey Shore – uh, bar A, bar anticipation in New Jersey. What the hell are you doing in Jersey? Well, you know, it's funny. I did that show at Bar A way back in the WFAN days, long before 9 11. I would go, you know, Friday in the summertime. It's a big bar, it's about a block, about three or four blocks from the ocean in Belmar. Uh, it's a little right near Spring Lake. And I had a good time. Band, Southside Johnny, and everything else. <laughs> and then I left FAN and I have not been. And I, I mailed in my resignation from the bar A on a Thursday night because I didn't have a fax machine. So I went to bar A as I was at the church of shore to mail in my resignation. And when I could, when I went to Sirius, uh, you know, 14 years ago, so I have not been back and Sirius and bar A made a deal. I'm going to go August 4th, three to seven on a Friday afternoon in three weeks. So we'll okay, wait a minute. Did you, now. did you announce your resignation the way Pat Riley did when he, didn't he fax in his he resume sure to the did. Knicks? Yes, he did. Pat has never spoken to me since. Yes, I did. They, they uh, uh, FAN wanted to get that done immediately. And in that letter, I was not allowed to go work at ESPN radio. So in the resignation letter, to get it in, I had to indicate, and I was going to go to Sirius anyway, I wasn't gonna, that I was not allowed to be on the air mm -hmm. at ESPN. So they wanted that ASAP. So that is why I ran to Bar A to, as I was at the Jersey Shore for a summer, and I got that resignation. In. So now I go back, first time in 14 years. Have you, had, have you had Springsteen on your show? Uh, I have had him on once, Super Bowl, when he did halftime, Arizona-Pittsburgh. Okay. You remember in Tampa? Yeah. Had him on for about 15 minutes. That's it. Nobody else. And he's not a big sports guy. No, he likes baseball, though. Big baseball fan. Okay, but do you have a problem with he could throw that speed ball by you, make you look like a fool? I mean, speed ball? Glory days. Yeah, glory days. You know, the speed ball should be the, called the fastball. Yeah. The stand, you don't like the vernacular. Uh, yeah, I, I listen. Is he going to break down like you and I? Can? <laughs> <laughs> like the 27 Yankees? But, but somebody's got to say... I mean, nobody, a speed ball is what killed John Belushi. Like, I don't need, that's not a baseball point. reference. I, it's not a baseball reference. Uh, I guess I'll give him a pass because it's part of the song. Fogarty, center field. Yes. I, uh, those, uh, those, uh, those lyrics better, a little more baseball oriented. I don't even know. No, no, Fogarty, he loves baseball. He watches, oh, he oh loves baseball. Loves baseball. Watches oh, it every does. night. Yes, he does. Oh, he watches every night. Doesn't yes, he, do he yeah. loves baseball. By the way, there's one song that I can't stand that Springsteen sings. What's that? Because I don't get people excited over Hungry Heart. When he's got a wife and kids in Baltimore, Jack, and then all of a sudden he leaves them, and people are, you know, they're having a damn good time that he just left his his wife and his kids, Chris. It's a good point, and that's a he does that song in Baltimore all the time. 
Uh, that was, if I'm not mistaken, Hungry Heart, it might be one of his most best-selling singles Ugh. when that came out, you know, whenever it was, 1980, 81. Uh, did you see him on this tour? I did not. Um, I, Are you going to see him? I would like to. I just don't like the hassle of getting to a show. Pain in the neck. Yeah. Well, you got Mohegan Sun. You got Albany. He hasn't played those two spots yet. I want to go see Taylor Swift before I want to see Spring. I've seen and you Bruce. haven't seen her yet either. Is yeah. she going to Boston? Uh, I don't know. I haven't checked the schedule, but I've seen Bruce a few times and always so enjoyed you've it. You've been part of that. Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, I saw him twice. I saw him in Boston and I saw him at, in Newark on the 14th. And I'll go again. Uh, you know, did you hear him with Howard? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I heard that interview. And you liked it, I'm sure, right? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah, he did a good job. Yeah, he did a good job. Um, yeah, I will. Uh, you know, I'll see him for a third time. I have. I, my daughter went to Taylor Swift at the at, at MetLife. Yeah, loved it. She went there at MetLife, and you heard about the issue this week at Denver because she was there when the Yankees were there the same weekend. You knew that, right? I'm sure you saw that. <laughs> Who's having a better year though, Taylor or the Yankees? Obviously, Taylor. I swear, and the Yankees, they can't lose enough for me. Like, only five, six, <laughs> ten, over five hundred. Keep on losing. <laughs> Uh, Taylor was in Boston a couple of months ago, I'm being told. Oh, so you missed her. Yeah, I missed her. I know Springsteen's playing Foxborough. You know that, right? Yeah, I don't know. Why don't you go? You like that. Why don't you go? I, it's a hassle. You you know that one road in, one road oh, that's out at Fox. That's like, that's why don't you go to Mohegan Sun? Yeah, maybe. Why not? It's, but he's going to play doesn't... Hungry Heart, and everybody's going to be cheering no, that he's he leaving knows... his wife and kids. He only played Hungry Heart on this tour in Baltimore. It's been the same 27 songs. Okay. You will not hear that if that bothers you so much. It does. And by the way, Growing Up and She's the One are my two favorite Springsteen songs. You'll get She's the One. He has not played Growing Up yet. Well, I saw you know, him on Broadway. Playing. When he did Broadway. Oh, he did some on Broadway. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, he does not play Rosalita in Europe. And he plays Rosalita in the United States. Did you know that? I did, not, I did not know that. Yeah, so that seems that he he has not played it in Europe at all. Are you listed as a Springsteen insider? Uh, I used to be, more so. Okay. You know, whenever I saw him for the first time in 1978, um, and I saw him twice that summer, and I took a blind date Ooh. at Madison Square Garden. I got lottery. I got tickets through the lottery. So I saw him at the Garden in August of 78. He played five nights. I saw him on a Saturday night. I took the Long Island Railroad in, and I had a blind date. Didn't amount to anything, but I went in, and you know where he was on the Monday night after he played four nights at the New Haven Coliseum? <laughs> well, he was an animal back then. Oh, he did. I'll give you another one that's funny. I saw him one night in Lakeland, Florida, in February of 83. No, I'm sorry, 81. You know where he was the night before in Lakeland? So he plays Lakeland like on a Tuesday night. On Monday night, he was in Starkville, Mississippi, not Mississippi City. <laughs> That's pretty good. Oh, uh, you're great. No, no days off for Brucey and those days. No, 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 just like you. Uh, no. hey, great to talk to you, Chris. Love you, Danny. Thank Keep you, buddy. Going. That's Mad Dog Russo joining us. We'll take a break. Best and worst right after this. <laughs> 